Hello everyone and welcome to a Google Calendar admin session that we are titling uh, Google Calendar Admin Settings. They exist and you should know about them. So we are going to go into the Google Calendar Admin Settings, uh, talk a little bit about um, what you can manage, what you can't manage, talk about uh, building and room resources and a little demo of what that looks like. Let's dive right in. So we're in our admin console here. I'm gonna navigate over to my calendar app. So on the left side here, I'm gonna click my apps. Under Google Workspace, I'm gonna click calendar and we'll be brought over to calendar. So we have a couple of different options. Uh, this first section here is sharing settings. And we're gonna see resources, room insights, general settings, advanced settings, a couple different things. Let's start with this sharing settings. So this is gonna be the bulk of our uh, sharing settings, but uh, there's a couple more we'll dive into in a minute. So uh, going from top to bottom, working location. Do you wanna allow users to set their working location? So they can write if they're at home, away, in the office, on the plane, um, you will add it right there to the top of your calendar. It looks something like this, where it says home, or it says office. Um, you could toggle that on and off. Remember any of these settings, you could toggle on and off for the entire organization, a specific organizational unit, a group, a specific user, and you can really dive in and make it granular changes. Um, these are the first sharing option is external sharing options for primary calendars. So your primary calendar is where your default events are going to go to. So when sharing it outside of your domain, what is the, uh, level of permissions that you, the highest level of sharing that you want to allow your users. So my uh, primary email, my primary calendar, how much do I want the outside world to be able to see that? Um, if I have it set on only free busy, then, so anybody who is outside of our organization can only see if I am free or busy. Um, even if I wanted to make it so they can see all information, that is not something I can change uh, from the user level. If I change it here to sharing all information, uh, but outsiders cannot change calendar, share all information, outsiders can, uh, share all information and allow manage. Um, this is the highest level. This is not the default, um, but this is the highest level that your users could change those sharing options to. The safest is probably this only free busy. And then uh, when you, the next one is the internal sharing. So uh, this is the default uh, that you set up for your uh, domain. So it's a little bit different than the setting before where this is the highest level, um, but this one is the default that will be set for everybody. So within your organ organization, what do you want other users to be able to see? Um, only free busy, uh, seeing all the information of the calendar events or no sharing at all. Um, so if you want to go have a little bit of uh, secrecy and um, you can go ahead and leave it on only free busy and share calendar specifically within your teams. Um, but if you want to be very, very transparent um, to everybody about all of your events, you could have it on share all information. And this will apply to every single user in your organization, unless you go ahead and change it to a specific OU or specific group on the left side. All right, video conferencing. Um, would you like to make Google Meet your default video conferencing uh, provider? You could check that on or off. And you wanna automatically add video conferencing to events that are created. That way, that's one less step that anybody has to do. And if you're fully remote, um, this might be a little bit e of an easier option instead of constantly clicking to add video conferencing. All right. When um, users are inviting guests outside of your domain, do um, you wanna see those external invitations. Uh, probably a good thing to have on just for risk to be able to designate whether it's coming from inside your organization or outside, checking that on. Uh, working hours, similar to your working location, you can allow users to set their working hours. So this way, when you go and create a calendar event and look at somebody else's availability, you'll see grayed out hours of when their working hours are, and try and keep within those um, if possible. Again, you have to toggle this on to allow your users to even set them up. Okay, and then displaying the uh, display of calendar status within Workspace. So 
uh, they've been able to, uh, calendar has been able to really evolve in the designation of events, right? So you, you've had out of office for a while, and now you have this in a meeting, in focus time. So you can toggle these statuses on. So that way, um, if somebody's trying to uh, book me or do something, they can more easily see what I am doing rather than it's kind of just being this blank stare of they're just busy. And I don't know if that means they're in a meeting, if they're out of the office, if they're just in their office focusing. So if you want to toggle these on, there's a little bit more transparency there. All right, let's get out of our sharing settings. Let's scroll on down. So we have our resources here. We're going to come back to resources uh, in a few minutes. Uh, because it's a, we, it brings us to a different page. Same with Room Insights. We're going to come back to that. Let's go to our general settings. So our general settings, um, this is about our secondary calendars. So if you create a calendar for your team, right? Um, maybe it's a, a, a specific birthday calendar or a specific uh, event calendar or um, a training resources calendar. These are secondary calendars that you make, not your primary ones. So this is setting up the external and internal sharing options for those secondary calendars. So if I go into these, again, for external, this is your highest level of sharing possible. So do you want it for secondary calendars, sharing externally, do you want to make it only free busy? That's the highest that you can see. <clears throat> you want to be able to share all information, so on and so forth. Okay, uh, for internal, Right, we can do the same thing, but we could set the default. Do you want it to be no sharing, only free, busy, share all information? What would we like to do there? Okay, and then this room booking permissions allow users to book resources that that are shared as see only free, busy. So this is going to come back in a few minutes when we talk about resources. But this gives the uh, your users the ability to book resources um, or not. Okay, we'll scroll on down. Um, manage events. Manage events is very much for a transition sort of moment. So if you are going to suspend or delete a user and you need to cancel events that they have or transfer ownership of events that they have, um, in here you can click on any of these and you can type in a user and cancel all of their events or transfer events to a different user. Be careful with this. Um, these are uh, very powerful tools. You would really just want to make sure that you know what you are doing and what the impact will be depending on what you're doing. All right, let's keep on going through. We did general, we did manage events, advanced settings. So we, a couple of advanced settings here. Do you want to allow your users to see their analytics of how they allot their time, uh, allocate their time? You could toggle that on or off. Again, this could be broken down by OU. Um, do you want to allow for a calendar a little offline access? You could toggle that on and off. And what's the default uh, event duration? So when you click to make a new event, it's always going to add a 60 minutes, or you can make it 45 minutes, 30 minutes, 120 minutes, whatever you want to do. Again, obviously, when you make an event, you can make it as long as you like or as short as you like. But what's that default that comes through? You could change that here. Um, at the very bottom, there's also some um, options for interoperability with um, Microsoft and uh, other Exchange pieces here. So if you wanted to go ahead and click through this, there's a lot of documentation here. We're not going to cover that today, but you're able to go ahead and cr set up that interoperability. All right, let's circle back to our resources. So not only do you have users in your environment who have a calendar, but you can have uh, rooms, spaces, uh, vehicles, um, uh, other resource projectors, cars, or whatever it is um, that uh, folks can reserve um, as part of either a meeting or just um, something that they need for the moment. So being able to use resources in your environment can be very, very helpful and powerful. So you can have lots of conference rooms that um, folks can schedule and see the availability um, of those spaces. So we're going to dive into that a little bit today. So I click on resources here. You'll see it brings me to a very different path here. So it's now it's in building resources, resource management. So let me just show you on the side how I got here. Um, if you wanted to go here directly, 
So if I bring up my sidebar here, under directory, instead of under apps, <clears throat> we have buildings and resources, and then there's this overview. And it, bring, it says resource management <clears throat> and uh, room insights. So I'm gonna go to resource management. And you can see I already set some stuff, some stuff up here. So let me talk about how this works hierarchical. So we're gonna start with buildings on the left side. So you wanna go ahead and make some buildings of where your resources lived. You don't necessarily need to, but it's a little bit helpful for categorizing. So I've set up two buildings here, uh, the Death Star and the Rebel Base. And if I click into those buildings, you could see I've made a couple of different resources in, those, in that building. Um, so I have the loading bay, I have a TIE fighter, I have Vader's conference room, and in the rebel base I have the gathering room, General Ghana's conference room, and the lookout. Um, so I'm going to show you how I set up a building and how I set up a resource and how this is helpful in a second. So, um, and you could also see that I have floor designations on where these places are. So let's go ahead by starting to make a building. So I'm going to make a new building and click manage buildings. And I'm going to create a new building, okay? And this is gonna be uh, the uh, Hoth base. That's the name of the building. And here we can put in a description of our building, super secret cold base. And I can put the, the floors in there so you can uh, make the floors whatever your numbers or letters would be. So I'm gonna do this as uh, all underground, right? So B3, B2 for basement and B1. Uh, if you wanna put an address in, you can, but it's not required. I'm gonna add a building. And you can see now I have a new building and it has the floors designated. So now if I switch over to, I'm gonna click this little drop down and go to resources. I can now add a new resource. I'm gonna hit this plus yellow plus and I'm gonna add a new resource. So I'm going to select my building in the base. It is a meeting space. So let's call it the uh, main uh, meeting room. And I can choose what floor it's on. These are the choices that I just entered in there. So it's gonna be on B1, let's say. Um, I could put in the floor section if I want. I could put in the type. I can make it as, this is a conference room uh, or a meeting space. I'm gonna leave it on meeting space. And then I could put in the capacity. It's gonna be, be able to hold 200 people, let's say. And if there are anything, other things you wanna be able to put in here, another description for a user, you can add that in here. There's also this option here for a calendar based room release. Um, and what that does is it makes it so that if um, there's only one, if everybody uh, who accepted uh, has canceled except for one person, um, and now it's only that one person left, this will free up the room um, for anybody else to be able to book it, assuming that the one person doesn't want to meet by themselves. There are ways around this and there's nuances to be able to look into this, but I just wanted to tell you a brief description of what calendar-based room release was. So I'm gonna add this resource. And right now I can see all buildings, so I can see all my resources. But if I go to the Hoth base, I can see my main meeting space here. Okay, so what does this mean? How is this helpful? Um, so let's pretend these are actually my spaces in my organization. Um, if I go over to calendar, this is for any user within my environment. Uh, my latest one might not show up right away, but we'll try. I'm gonna make a new meeting for uh, tomorrow morning. And it's going to be a um, council meeting. And I'm going to say that's the great time. And here I can go ahead and add rooms. So what I can do now, see my hot base didn't sync yet. It'll take a few moments. Um, is I can look at my rebel base and I can see the rooms that are available. So I can see, I can go ahead and use the gathering room, the lookout. So I'm gonna use the gathering room. Um, and now I click this and I can go ahead and invite other people to my uh, meeting and I can hit save. Okay, now if I were to wanna book another meeting at the same time, or somebody else will want to book another meeting at that time, um, second secret, secret meeting, and I click on rooms. Let's look at this a little bit carefully. It's going to show me 
available rooms only. I can change this to include unavailable rooms, but by default, it's in available rooms only. So if I click on Rebel Base, you'll notice that that large gathering space meeting room is not here because it's not available. It's already be, been booked. If I include unavailable, you can see, here's my off base, that the gathering room is booked. It's crossed out there, so I can't select that. So this is the advantage of being able to use room resources for booking both rooms and spaces, but also other um, things as well, like vehicles and resources. Okay, so um, the really, really great thing is being able to centrally manage and locate uh, and create all of these resources in the admin console, and then new users have the ability to book them and assign them to specific spaces. All right, if you have any questions about uh, admin calendar uh, settings or room resources or buildings or anything like that, please reach out to us. Thanks so much.